Pearl R. Miller Middle School in New Jersey forced 12-year-olds to watch a video about hormone therapy. And this video didn't just explain hormone therapy, which I'd be opposed to by itself, but it also glorified hormone therapy as well. It was shown to these kids without parental consent and without even informing the parents that this video would be shown to these kids. It's actually a YouTube video titled 10 Years on Testosterone, which I'll show a bit of in a minute. It's a video about a disturbed young woman who takes hormones so that she might look like a man. And I, I don't want to use the term transition to a man because that entertains the idea that that's something that's attainable, that you can transition into a man. You can, you, you can take hormones and you can do surgeries to make yourself look like a man, but that is ultimately as far as it goes. And that, by the way, is not the way this was presented in this video. So let's take a look at this video. Again, I'm not going to show the whole thing, firstly, because I don't want to violate copyrights, but perhaps um, despite that, I mean, I still wouldn't want to play it because I think it would be nauseating. But do remember, those 12-year-olds were forced to watch this entire thing. So let's take a look. When I began this journey 10 years ago, I had no idea where life was going to take me. I was 21 years old with no language to describe the way I was feeling and no one to turn to. I don't feel comfortable as a woman, but I don't feel 100% comfortable as a man. Okay, let's stop right there. So what we know is, she doesn't feel comfortable. I mean, she didn't really have to say as a woman and as a man, because, I mean, that's it. That's all there is. So, so what we really know is that she doesn't feel comfortable in her own skin, in her own body, so maybe she actually needed therapy as opposed to mutilation and hormones. And this is, this is really important because, foundationally, what you have to remember is that so many of these different cases of so-called trans kids are kids who simply didn't fit in, or didn't feel like they fit in, which is, what, most kids? Who didn't feel like they fit in in high school and so on? And so what we're doing as a society is taking these kids who don't think they fit in, don't feel like they're as they ought to be in that person, and saying, well, maybe you're not right. Maybe you're fundamentally broken and therefore you'll never fit in, and so you should actually take these hormones and, and in, some, in some sense get a sense of identity from something that you're not, because that's what we're talking about, right? When you take hormones in order to look like the other, the other sex, then you try and find an identity in that thing which you will never actually be. And, I mean, that, that's, that, that's tragic, actually. Uh, let's go back and continue. I feel like I'm still figuring out, you know, I know that I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. My body was a prison, and I felt like there was no way out. Okay, so again, I, I think it was Socrates who said the body is the prison of the soul, but lots of people feel this way. Obviously, she was disturbed. Obviously, she was depressed. Nobody's denying that. I'm not saying that that doesn't matter. I'm merely saying that that doesn't mean that you can or should attempt to uh, switch your sex. And you can try and... There's someone out there who's trying to distinguish and arguing the fact that they're not changing their gender. They're, they're not changing their sex, they're changing their gender, but there is no ability to distinguish here. When you're talking about taking hormones and mutilating your body, you're changing your sex or attempting to change your sex. All right, let's continue, though. I'm going to skip forward a little bit because at the moment, I mean, she's going to talk at length about how she doesn't feel she has a sense of purpose. And really, that's a standpoint of anyone who has any sort of identity crisis, which is the very normal for a teen, which is why it's so dangerous that this would be played to, to kids of this age. All right, so we're going to skip forward um, a little bit here. What if I had a future? Everything ahead of me was a blur. But eventually, things began to change. I began to change. Okay, and here we go, where the entire hormone uh, therapy is glorified, again, to 12-year-olds who are watching, um, in which this woman acts like everything is perfect, um, and you can fully transition, which you can't, uh, without health impact, which you can't. Um, and again, you have to remember, this, this is 12-year-olds watching and being confused by this. 
day, um, I called a clinic in the city and I got an appointment to meet with um, an endocrinologist and pretty much start my whole um, tea thing. Okay, the tea thing is testosterone um, injections. Uh, in order that she might start having a deeper voice, she'll start getting facial hair and chest hair and so on. And in addition to that, surgeries are then taken to make the person look physically more masculine. In some cases, they also uh, do surgery on the genitalia as well. I'm going to skip way ahead to the end, though, to see the, the sort of happy conclusion that's given, I mean, the, the really false narrative that's given um, to these kids who are watching this. All right, so here we go. And you can see her with a child. No information is given about how this child was conceived. I love myself more than I do now. I've never felt more complete in my life as a man, as a husband, as a brother, as a son, as a father, as a mentor, as an advocate. Okay, we're just going to stop there. And so what you, what you just saw being presented to kids was the idea that a, a woman can become a man, can then become a father and a husband, and raise a child in a normal family, uh, you know, fulfilling the, the masculine role in that. And that's simply not true. It's absolutely false. And yet, there's nobody in this classroom with these 12-year-olds saying, actually, that's, that's not really the case. You know, we can figure out exactly how this child was conceived, maybe through IVF. We don't know. I mean, it, who knows? Uh, m maybe the woman in that picture is not actually a woman and is actually a guy, and it's just, yeah, who knows? But implying to 12-year-olds that this woman was able to have a child by fulfilling the male role in the relationship is just patently false. And then there's the sort of lies by omission that undergird this entire video. They're not showing the barbarism of the surgeries. It doesn't show the side effects of the medications of the, in this case, it would be um, the testosterone injections. It's not showing the people who regretted their so-called transition. There's, I mean, if you look up detransitioning and you can see the horror stories of the people who have tried to reverse what was done to them you know as they were confused and struggling and going through an identity crisis and then a doctor was willing to hand out these these drugs and do these surgeries and then they're trying to find their way back to who they are meant to be before god and it's it's a very very painful process and it doesn't also mention that for these people who do have uh, gender dysphoria, when they go the full route and they start going through these hormones, the evidence doesn't suggest that they're happier. It doesn't. The suicide rates are the same or even higher as they deny themselves. And so misinforming, I mean, this topic shouldn't even be brought up with 12 year olds, but it's not just being brought up, it's being actively promoted. Uh, through lies, because you have to use lies and the denial of truth in order to promote something like this. And again, this isn't in New Jersey, which is a state that is about to enact the updated health standards, there's the euphemistic term, in September that have been pushed by the Democratic governor, Phil Murphy, in which second graders will be taught about genitalia, reproduction, and so-called gender expression, which is in other words, the, the, the idea that you can pretend to be the other sex and so on. Fifth graders will be required to define masturbation and differentiate between sexual orientation and gender identity. Fifth graders, that was. Eighth graders will have to define gender identity, gender expression, vaginal sex, oral sex, and anal sex. That's eighth graders. So... <laughs> Periodically, I tell people that, you know, you should get your kids out of the public school. It seems like this is now a good point in time in which I should re 
restate that because you can't control what your kids are being taught there. In fact, in the case of this video, the parents only found out about it after the fact. And this is absolute indoctrination and it's evil. I absolutely think that people should get their kids out of these school systems. And yes, whether you have kids in the school system or not, show up to these school boards and let these school boards know how you feel. Because for too long, you've had the case where leftists in positions of power don't expect any pushback from the right. And I hate to use such terms on a on a topic that ought to be so um, so obvious and that ought to be so bipartisan, but it's not at this point, because now we have a situation in which those on the left have actively embraced uh, that which is evil and degenerate, and it's only those on the right that seem to care in the least about morality and decency. So that's where we are, and that's why I use those terms. But really, find out what your kids are learning and, and do what you can, do what you have to, to protect them.